Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. And we're going to talk about specifically having an all-player, all-Dungeon Master campaign, and how that works when you're carrying the story from one Dungeon Master to another. Alright, so currently my Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, uh, 5th Edition campaign is using, we call it Along the Shore. Uh, it's using a very unusual structure. Every We have four players and four DMs, four Dungeon Masters. So every participant in the game is both a Dungeon Master and a player. All right. So so one of the things that came up immediately was this question of what happens to the story, okay? So as soon as, you know, how is it carried from one Dungeon Master to the other, right? So one of the things that really fascinated me was really realizing all the obstacles to making this work, right? So one, it is working right now. We're going into session four, and it's it's on rails. It, it is really, you know, just firing off extremely well. But we want to keep it that way, and we know there are some challenges. So one of the things I realized is not only... So what are the obstacles to making an all-DM, all-player uh, play structure for Dungeon Master, for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition work? Well, first of all, there's the Dungeon Master style, right? I'm more Monty Hall, and we have some more realistic... You know, more uh, simulationist uh, GMs, right? We have different levels of, of knowledge of the rules, right? Um, so we have some really different Dungeon Master styles. That's the obstacle one, okay? The, the obstacle I did not expect that we ran into as soon as we asked this story question was expectation, right? Uh, and also ability. <laughs> let's, t let's talk about this. So expectation and ability. So let's talk about expectation first. So what is the expectation of every player at the table, of every dungeon master at the table, of how their, their story will be carried over? So I started the game, and it was me and Bill, right? And so and we both understood the story structure. We're now full. We have me, Bill, Greg, and Mike, okay? And um, so, so we have now, yeah. So we have me, Bill, Greg, and Mike, right? And... We and, and things are moving forward. And the biggest, the first thing we ran into was expectation. So I ran for Bill in session one. And so it, we, every single one of our sessions is two hours long. That's, that's a Garibay like stop, right? I, I do not play in, ga in games that are more than two hours long anymore if I can help it. Sometimes I can't help it, but I, you know, movie length, it's important, right? So, uh, so we're running these two hour sessions. So in the first session, I, I ran. My, I ran a story, okay, and it was complete, right? So basically, we, we by the way, we are using the essentials kit. So we literally have the Faerun map with Neverwinter Woods and the Fandolin City, and uh, and and you know, and basically, and then if you and the Neverwinter Woods map with you know, it's like hundreds, it's like a hundred hundred miles by maybe eighty miles of space that you can adventure in. And then if you flip it over, Fandolin is a highly detailed city, right? So this was great. And I, I ran my story right there in, you know, on the map uh, near Fandolin. So they were heading into Fandolin, right? So there was an encounter in the woods and it was completely contained, right? I started my story. My story had a start, middle, and an ending within two hours. And I didn't think anything of it. I was like, yeah, of course, we'll all do that, right? We'll all st tell a story that could be told in two hours. And I'm an incredibly capable dungeon master, and I can do this in my sleep. I can run a two-hour story, beginning, middle, and end, in two hours, no problem, right? How do I do that? Well, one, um, I, I do it with a few different things, right? Um, here's how I run it, right? So I do it with... Um, with one to two combats, period. That's it. That's all you're gonna get. You don't. You don't. You don't have four combats in in a story. Just don't. You have two, one or two, one or two, right? Second of all, use momentum, right? So, um, the vast majority of uh, dungeon of D of D and D uh, combat is finished within a within a single within three rounds, right? So a lot of times there's four or five or six rounds, but it's a lot of it is cleanup, right? Like if you got if I have four, you know, if there's four player characters and there's two goblins out of the eight goblins left and two of them are wounded, I'm not going to run round four of combat. I'm going to say, 
you guys, uh, it's your choice. You slay or you, um, uh, you slay or you capture the goblins. What's your choice, right? We don't, we don't role play it, right? We don't, we don't, we don't actually roll any dice for the cleanup round, right? Now I take the first three rounds completely serious, but I use momentum to just sweep up unneeded rounds, right? And so that really helps, right? So those are things that I do to contain my story to within two hours. So next week it was Bill's turn, right? So Bill, like, I, I knew it before it happened, right? He starts off, and he just runs one of the quest cards from the from the box, right? Which was fantastic. I was so... Oh, and by the way, I gave him the box, right? I gave him the Essentials Kit box when we started. And the reason why was they had a special close to my house for Target had the Essentials box, which is $25 retail for 8 bucks, right? So I bought 10 of them, and I just give them out like candy, right? Because the dice alone in them are worth the eight bucks, and it's like, the you know the adventure, the map, the um, everything that's in uh, like the you know initiative cards and condition cards and like and a free like and a uh, uh, a game master uh, a, a GM screen right, uh, it's all free. Like essentially, you're just paying for the dice and you get all this stuff for free and the cool box, right? So like I was so he he just ran a bog standard quest right out of the box, right? And it turned out fantastic. He felt very comfortable because he's new to being a Dungeon Dragons 5th edition um, Dungeon Master. He actually has run a ton of Genesis, right? So Genesis is the generic Star Wars system. It's the generic FFG system that came out of Star Wars which has used those narrative dice. And actually, it's really fun to see Bill DM because he, he's, he's almost like a, you know, like a, a toddler on ice skates. He's like, what am I doing here? What's happening? You know, like, I'm like, dude, you've already run a much more complicated system. That's just use your confidence from that and assume you're fine here. You know, but he's like, yeah, he, it's just, he's, he's having, he's nervous going into this new system. Right. And I, I told him, all you need to know is how to do a, how to do a skill check. Right. Like, you, you know, uh, and basically every attack is just a skilled skill check, you know, where you use your proficiency. And so, you know, I, I just had to explain to him, you, you know, your player's going to roll a d20, they're going to, they're always going to add their attribute, and the only question is if they're going to add their proficiency bonus, they're always going to add their attribute bonus, are they going to add a proficiency bonus, and they add their proficiency bonus if they're skilled, and they don't get it if they're not, that's it, it's the whole system. You can run all of Dungeons and Dragons with that, with that right there, right, like, as long as you don't have some rule, rules later at the table, which we do, unfortunately. So, uh, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> like, all right, so, so you know, so we're, we're building his, his confidence, right? So he gets into it, and sure enough, he runs all two hours, and he isn't even close to finishing the story, right? And he's like, so next week, you're going to take this over, right, Scott? And I was like, or whoever I bring in will. And I said, well, let's slow it down here. You're close. You could wrap this in the next session, right? Because we're, we're well over halfway through this. Right, and he's like, "Yes, I can do it. I can wrap it in the next session." Right, and I'm like, "Fantastic, man! Don't worry about it. You can keep the GM seat for one more week, and then the, we'll bring in a new person next week. His friend, he brought in Greg, right? Uh, who I really, I, I'm not a super fan of Greg, but I, but I don't have a legitimate reason to not be a super fan of Greg. He is a nice person. He's smart and fun." He's just too much like me, and that's why I think that's why sparks are flying between the two of us, right? And so, um, you know, and and he knows the rules better than I do, but he doesn't know the etiquette, and he doesn't know, and he's not more creative than me, in my opinion, right? We'll, we'll see where where all this lands, right? So Greg come Greg comes in. So the next session, Greg comes in, and we play the, the second session, and what I, I I'm sorry, we we play the third session, and what what really fascinated me was. Bill got, so basically the one that he ran was, uh, we were delivering, the quest he ran, there's some spoilers here for the Essentials box, was the, uh, we ran this story where essentially the, um, there was a logging camp and we, we delivered provisions to the logging camp, but the logging camp was all broke apart and there was no one there, right? Well, what had happened is these Ankegs had come out of the ground, killed everybody at the logging camp. And they were in control of the log, log camp. So we fought two Ankegs. And um, we fought two Ankegs. And 
and it was done and and you know at and it's like 9:45 and I'm like great job Bill and I was like uh, so what do we get when we loot the camp and he's like well it's not really time to loot the camp could be more that's going to happen here and I'm like is there I'm like we've we've delivered the provisions we fought these two onkegs we defeated the onkegs why why aren't we just going to loot the logger camp and go back to Fandolin to collect our money right and uh, and Eddie's like, well, there could be more things that happened. And sure enough, he at the very end at like nine fifty five, he's like, and then an, another on cake breaks out of the ground, boom, right? And I was like, well, what's the purpose of this? Why, you know? And so his expectation was not only that he that on some weeks he might need longer than one session, right? And I t- uh, we already we already and I said. We're going to give you the second session, but you cannot go into a third because that that just breaks the, apart our whole idea of the rotating DMC, right? And he's like, yeah, I understand, right? And I was like, okay, we just ended the game and another Onkeg broke out of the ground. Why'd you do that, right? And he's like, I want the next GM to pick up the story right from there. And I was like, ugh, right? Because my expectation was that you would start a story, you would have a middle, and you would have an end. And then you would you would button up your story like they do on every sitcom, like they do on every drama, like they do on every sci-fi show. And then the next writer comes in, and they don't have to continue your story. Your story's done, right? But the expectation was different, right? And frankly, I have to say, because he's a newer dun, you know D and D five E dungeon master, he didn't have the ability to finish it in um, in in two or even three sessions, right? But at this point, Ju- this at this point, Greg is on to DM, and he will pick up right there at the you know uh, at the logger camp and carry the story forward, right? And Greg is ready, right? And so I just thought it was fascinating to me to realize not only were we dealing with DM styles, we we're dealing with expectations. What is the expectation? My expectation is you start, middle, and finish in two hours, right? But now I realize that is incredibly rare. I'm capable of that, and I expect that, but a lot of DMs don't, right? So we may see some some sessions where uh, a DM, if they have, they're like, oh, I need 15 more minutes to finish this. They may they may in the they may go a whole session plus 15 minutes in the next one, and then the next DM starts in the 15 minutes, and maybe they can do an entire story. I could do an entire story in 60 minutes, right? Um, so I might you know even if somebody took 15 minutes of my session, I could still finish in that hour and 45, right? But one of the other ones. So but the other thing is the rule that we are keeping fast is nobody goes over two sessions, right? And if you can't wrap your stuff in two sessions. The other GM picks up exactly where you left off, right? And that does mean that that GM might have to say... The other thing is people are like, well, what about the secrets and the things? And one of the things we're saying is, hey, what you presented in your game is real. But that person, they can... We are not expecting one DM to hand over their notes to the other DM. Because whatever they have planned is done. It's not going to come to fruition. That NPC now belongs to that next that next Dungeon Master. They don't need their stat block or anything else. Everything that was established in the first game is real. If they were carrying a sword, they have a sword, right? But that doesn't mean they can't uh, pull out a magical stone, you know, um, that they can't pull out a magical stone and get, you know, some additional material, uh, get, get some new weapons or get some new, you know, some additional other things. So all that's going on and... It really is. I, I just like am fascinated how, by how this game is going on. So not only are we, are we dealing with dungeon master uh, ability, we're dealing with dungeon master abilities, dungeon master styles, and dungeon master expectations. So it's just good to know what we're actually dealing with. But it's going great. I really appreciate all your great advice. Please continue bringing me good ideas to keep this thing on the rails. I don't want this thing to fail. I want this to be a great, great game, and I really appreciate everybody's great advice on how to keep this forward and also how to keep me in check and make sure that I'm giving proper, um, proper, full encouragement to everybody at the table. Thank you very much. Uh, please please let me know your thoughts on, on how we should handle these expectations, right? Um, and uh, please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.